Hi friends, this is Dave of JavaCodeJunkie.com and welcome to another JDBC tutorial. In today's episode, we're going to look at the Result Set class. A Result Set is a table of data that's generated by executing a statement against a database. I have a sample database that I've called Tutorial, and in that database I have an Employees table. And in Heidi SQL, which is what we're looking at right now, here is what the table looks like. We have columns for ID, employee ID, first name, last name, birth date, and a department ID. I also have some sample data, and we're going to create a connection and a statement, and then get a result set by executing a SQL query against this table. So let's go to our Eclipse IDE. I've already created a new project. And I have three variables already created as well in the main, cla main class. We're going to use a connection object, a statement object, and a result set object. Next, we have the connection details for our database. Let's create a try catch finally block. And in the try block, we're first going to create a connection to our database. Connection equals database dot get connection and we'll use the db url the user and password that we've created up above next we use the connection object to get a statement next i'll create a sql statement based on the fields that are in our employee table ID, employee ID, first name, last name, and birth date. Now we'll execute a query using the statement object and executing that query will return a result set. So result set equals statement dot execute query using our SQL statement. Now that we have the result set, we can iterate through it using a while loop. So while Result set dot next. Now for each row in the result set, we're going to retrieve the columns. Now there are two ways to retrieve the columns. We can retrieve the column by index, or we can retrieve them by column name. First, I'm going to show you how to retrieve them by column name. So the first element in our row is ID, and you'll see that by looking at the SQL string up above where we did the select ID, employee ID, first name, last name, and birth date from the employees table. So we're going to, in order, retrieve each of those columns from a row in the result set. So we'll say int ID equals result set dot get int, because it's an integer that we're retrieving, Use either the column index, and the column indexes in this case in a result set start at one and they go to the maximum number of columns that you're retrieving in the row, or we can retrieve by the column label. So let's do it by the column label and then we'll say in quotes ID and that will get us the ID column. Next we'll do the employee ID, which is also an integer. Int employee ID equals result set dot get int and the name of the column employee ID. The next column is a string so we'll say string first name 
equals result set equals result set dot get string. The column label for this one is first name. We'll do the same for last name. Result set dot get string. Last name. And finally, birth date. It's a date column. Date, birth date, equals result set, dot get date, and the column name as specified in the SQL statement is birth date. And now I'm just going to print out some of the information for the Eclipse console. We'll catch any exceptions, and for now we'll just print the stack trace to the system console. And finally, we'll clean up our resources. Database dot close result set. Database dot close statement. And finally, database.close connection. And if we've done everything correctly, we should now get a list of records in the employee table in the Eclipse console. And there we are. It's just a little more room in the console. You'll see that it starts with Michael Thompson and ends with Roy Alonso. So that's how you process a result set. And the second way that you can get the results of a row in a result set is by using the column index. Well, I'm just going to copy this section of code and then I'm going to comment the section and I'm going to paste in what I just copied. And we're going to change this so that now we'll use the index. So we can use index one for the column, index two for the employee ID, three for the first name, four for the last name, and five for the birth date. And this is again based on our select statement ID is the first column, employee ID is the second column, the third is first name, the fourth is last name, and the fifth and final is birth date. So now, when we run this program again, it should give us exactly the same output. Starting with Michael Thompson and ending again with Roy Alonso. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing so that you don't miss any content to release new videos. Thanks for hanging out with me again today. I appreciate it as always, and I hope to see you again in the next video. Until then, stay safe and keep on coding.